welcome to another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, from MrGoff.com. This video will focus on how development is measured. One obvious way to compare development between countries that we already know about is GDP per capita. This is because GDP per capita can give a good idea of the average incomes of a country because output is income for the people that produce it. The higher the average income, the more money people in that country have to spend in their economy and therefore it's likely it's going to be more developed. GDP alone is not enough to create a clear picture. It makes up one of three parts to the Human Development Index developed by the United Nations to judge development. The HDI also considers life expectancy and education as key factors in development in a country. Life expectancy may vary due to the level of access to health care. The doctor to number of population ratio varies greatly between different countries. The affordability of health care may also be a factor, with some countries providing access to health care for free, and others where it may be outside of the reach of much of the population. Life expectancy may also vary for those that live in countries that experience violent political conflict. It can also vary for those that face environmental issues such as drought, famine or flood. Education varies greatly between different countries in terms of the number of years children are likely to spend in education. This affects the number of people able to effectively read and write in each country, which impacts the labour market and productivity for those countries. The quality of education and the resources used to provide it may also vary greatly between countries. Developed nations are likely to have better facilities, greater access to technology, and lower teacher to pupil ratios than those in less developed nations. Access to technology is increasingly important for education and for trade. This may be measured by things such as the number of people with mobiles or the number of people in a country with internet access. Investment in technology and the underlying infrastructure for technology is also measured to be able to help predict a nation's future technology levels. The IHDI, or Inequality Adjusted Human Development Index, tries to also take into account the level of inequality of health, education and income within countries. In some countries, this is a small reduction in their normal human development index, and in others, it is much bigger. The bigger the difference, the greater the inequality in a country, meaning that no matter what its human development index is, there would be some people that are doing considerably better in terms of their access to these resources, and some that are doing far worse. That brings us to the end of this video looking at how development is measured. Join me in the next video when I'll be evaluating the consequences of globalisation for developed countries. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics, and until next time, it's bye for now.